It's a time. China time with a package from China. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we're going to take a close look at a new box called the EE and Android TV, or EE stands for MU Alec. Dual system game box. Man, they are keep releasing these things. This time it's the 4K Ultra HD edition. Oh man, they go all wild with all of these decals and stuff on the box. So after reviewing the Super Guns League for a very long time, yeah, there are so many of these boxes out there and I just always find it quite fascinating to see what are we going to get. What are we going to get? So this thing looks familiar. It looks like a Super Guns League, but it is not like a Super Guns League. It's slightly different. It feels already quite heavy compared with Super Guns League. It had this rubber coating. It comes with an on switch, stuff like that. But they called also the Gamebox G7. So you can see like there are a lot of different versions out there. And when it comes to functionalities, it still has two USB ports. It comes with an RG45, HD, AV out, NTF card, and then we're going to get the input for the 12 volt. Or they all, they all say, they always say like TF card, but we you know what I wanted to say. It's a micro SD card, and this time we're going to get a one on a 28 gigabyte. So I'm curious, what are we going to get with this device? What can we find in the inside? So inside we're going to get one dongle and this is the configuration of one dongle and two controllers. So we're going to get two wireless controllers and yeah, it's always a question what are you going to get with these things. They don't have rumble function, they just work on two AAA batteries, have an on and off switch. Over here we do have the indication for player 1 and player 2, sometimes it's just in a LED and mode. And overall like the quality, it feels okay. It is not the same quality like your original PlayStation 2 controller. They don't smell chemical for once. Okay, so here we're going to get a power supply. The power supply is in 12 volts and we're going to get a remote because it's dual boot so we can use it like an Android box. HDMI cable and of course the toilet paper metal. Okay, wait. What the hell? Why does this thing look like... <laughs> oh, they just slapped a metal inside of this thing in this, in this box. More like, you got metal? Figure it out yourself. And even I'm getting this Super Console X vibe with this new G7 box. Still there are some differences. To begin with, the box itself doesn't look like a one-on-one -on -one clone at all. No, so there are some differences over here. So to begin with, this thing has like a rubber coating. I really hate it. This is more like the cheap plastic shell. Another thing is we're going to do a weight comparison because I'm curious, like, this thing feels so much heavier. Another thing is like when it comes to the control ports, here we're going to get differences. Here you can see like they moved off the CF or the SD card function. And this means simply that there's an, a different mainboard inside. So I'm curious also like when it comes to the performance, what we can do with this thing. The Super Console X on top is slightly slimmer. This is more like a bulky case. But let's do a weight comparison. All right, so the Super Console X weighs 107 gram. And this weighs 147 grams. See, I told you this thing is freaking heavier. I can feel it with the wicked sense. So the device itself has a dual boot. So let's take a close look at that. The first time you boot it up, you need to configure everything, your Wi-Fi or your Ethernet, uh, your, your time and date, stuff like that. But then overall, when you're going to get booted up, this is what you're going to get. It's working on Android version 9.1. It's not the latest version. So let's go to the settings and I will show you what I mean. So nowadays, where we're making this video, we're having like Android 11 already, but this is a 9.1. Better than the Super Console X because those were running on Android 4, freaking prehistoric. We can still play some Netflix, but in consideration, these boxes are rooted, so sadly, we can't play in full HD. Beside that, I still had some issues with my HDMI port, so I needed to correctify that, all right. So booting up into YouTube, Basically, you can't watch all of your favorite content, but I noticed there are some limitations when it comes to the playback of 4K. Because they are forced to put it in 1080p. And in my opinion, it's quite a bummer. But take consideration, these are just low power boxes. So if you want to play some wicked Android games, yes, the basic stuff will work just fine. But if you're going to get the more demanding one, there we're going to get some issues. Think about the new Asphalt games. Oh yeah. So the intro doesn't even show Amir Alec on this. And I swear this thing is the Amir Alec device. 
All right, so let's take a close look at the main menu first. So what can we play for the people who have no idea like what you can do with this? So basically what I like about it, you have the option to add your games and you can play a lot of stuff like MAME, 16-bit, 8-bit and really old stuff like Atari. You can play um, handhelds, Game Boys, Lynx, Atari ST, Atomos Wave, the arcade systems. You name it, there is so much stuff you can play with this. But with the cheap boxes like these, most of the time what you're going to get is a mixed performance with N64 for example, Sega Dreamcast and many other systems. So that is something you need to take consideration. If you're going to get yourself like a more expensive box, then you can play both of the games on higher resolutions. And without all the glitching and all the weird stuff. But with AML Alec we can also configure a lot of stuff we couldn't do with the cheap stuff like the HDMI dongles we have seen before. Video mode, smoothing, you name it, everything can be changed out here. So if you want to see some more information about this, I also did a video about controller configuration. If you want to bring new controllers into the system, stuff like that. There's a lot of things you need to know. But if you just want to play, that is possible because the original controls have been reconfigured and you are basically ready to go with this. Okay, so the reason I booted up this game is very simple. This is a quite demanding system and with cheaper boxes you will get some okay gameplay but you will get a lot of stuttering when it comes to the games like this because we don't have enough juice to play these games. So already the Thomas Wave is pushing this box to the limit. But even N64 will be an issue with a lot of these cheap boxes, but still a lot of games are just playable. Take consideration, this is a game that will have some struggles sometimes, but in my opinion it's playable. Alright, so I was trying to play this game for some time, but the problem is like it's completely messed up. So when I'm pressing the A button to accelerate, it goes all crazy, so we need to do some reconfiguration. And this is what I mean, it's like sometimes you're finding games or controllers not configured correctly. So it makes the game freaking unplayable, or you're going to get this. Okay, so let's push this thing to a limit and just see how Sega Dreamcast will run with this game. Because this is a quite demanding game. I can hear in the audio that it has issues now. And this is what I mean with cheap boxes. You can just see that it has issues with more demanding games. Take consideration some games, again, like with N64, will run just fine. But for me, this is absolutely unplayable. You can just hear it and see it slow down. Quite annoying. Alright, so next up, let's try a different system. And just for fun to see how this shmup is working. So it's less demanding, it's still quite chaotic, and I'm dying every single freaking second. <laughs> but here you can see that it's got a very good performance. Alright, so next up, let's play PlayStation 1. Oh, still one of my favorite systems to play. And it looks amazing, and I don't think this thing is running on higher resolution than native. But still, it's a lot of fun playing these old school games. I noticed that the button mapping is not correct. A little bit of a bummer in my opinion, so there are always like things that you need to fix. But when it comes to cheap boxes, even then, PlayStation 1 runs just fine. Alright, so let's do a quick teardown, because I am super curious, what are we going to get with this box? So, the first thing I'm noticing, that this thing is not getting really hot, if they're using it for quite a long time, I'm using it for a couple of hours. And normally like Super Console X, or another version, gets quite hot, but this time, not at all. So, I am really curious, are we going to get some really good active cooling here? Okay, so, most of the screws have been removed now. Of course, there's always a screw that I am forgetting to loosen up all the way then there will be a clicking mechanism here okay that's interesting so I basically hold it upside down ah see and this is what I mean so that makes the most of the weight here we're going to get ourselves the metal plate but the weird thing is there is nothing basically connecting this so it's basically like laying on top here but does this thing even make any sense because 
even so you're going to put it in here this thing will never touch whatsoever they shoot like to something that connects it and can transfer the heat he has a kind of weird okay very very weird choice when it comes to construction but let's take a close look at this main board so the first thing i'm noticing the wi-fi antenna have been sold on straight onto the pcb a little bit of on a bummer if you ask me because that didn't look very nice production date there is no production date whatsoever on this main board so also there there is nothing we can do there's a QR code over there but there is not a lot of information now, I don't know if I can remove the chip but most of the time they hot glue this thing freaking on the board and I think I cannot remove it so we need to use IDA64 to double check if the specifications are correct so another weird thing is like we're having on the back a switch over here that doesn't do anything at the moment i tried it at first i was thinking it was an on off switch but it doesn't do anything at all or not with my version and it's kind of weird construction when it comes to this board and in combination with the button over here so yeah this is what we're going to get in the inside so let's put it back together let's get these pieces back and uh, yeah Let's chat chat about what I think of it in the end. Well, what do I think of this G7 game box? And overall, I think it's a pretty cool piece of technology, but for the price, we can't complain. To begin with the controller, yeah, it's a quite okay controller, seven out of 10 for score, because this controller is absolutely not bad. Like I have seen my share of chemical shitty control, but this thing, not bad at all. But when you're looking at the game box, at first I was, thought, I was thinking that this is just like a Super Console X, but nope, it is not a Super Console X in many ways. The casing is bigger, thicker, and yeah, they are like adding some extra weight to it, but it doesn't do anything when it comes to the cooling. So performance-wise, it's almost the same like the Super Console X in many ways. Yeah, and that's the thing with these boxes. You're not paying a lot for them, and you're not going to get a lot of performance. And overall, for 8-bit, 60-bit stuff, it's okay. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit that little bell. Become in the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video.